So good morning. Today in this lecture, we will discuss about anemia. So anemia can be defined as that there is a reduced hemoglobin concentration in the blood below the lower limit of the normal range for that age and sex of the individual. For example, in adults, the normal range for hemoglobin is 30 to 18 gram per deciliter for males and 11.5 to 16 gram for females. So normal lower extreme for hemoglobin is taken at 13 gram for male and 11.5 gram for females. It means if any male is having hemoglobin less than 13 grams, then he will be taken as an anemic. And in case of females, if the hemoglobin is less than 11.5 gram, then, he, then she will be taken as an anemic patient. The range of hemoglobin is slightly higher in case of newborn infants. So for newborn infants, 15 gram is taken as a lower limit at birth, while at the age of three months, that lower limit of normal is 9.5 gram. Although the value of hemoglobin in the blood is taken as a major parameter for determining whether or not an anemia is present. But there are some other alternative parameters which may be taken into account. For example, that red cell count, hematocrit or fat cell volume, and absolute values or red cell indices that is MCV, MCH, and MCSC, they all provide alternate means of assessing anemia. What are the general clinical features or what is the clinical presentation in case of anemia? This depends sign and symptoms of anemia on main four factors. Number one is the speed of onset of anemia. So it is the speed of onset of anemia which is responsible for development of the symptom and signs of anemia. If it is rapidly progressing anemia, this causes more symptoms than if anemia of the slow onset and because there is less time for physiological adaptation in case of rapidly progressive anemia. So in rapidly progressive anemia, sign and symptoms, they appear early. Second factor which is responsible for the development of sign and symptoms of anemia is severity of anemia. Mild anemia produces no symptom or sign, but a rapidly developing severe anemia, that is hemoglobin below 6 gram per deciliter, may produce significant clinical features. Third thing which is taken into account for development of sign and symptom of anemia is age of the patient. As you know, as the younger is the patient, because of good cardiovascular compensation tolerance, anemia is quite well as compared to the elderly. Elderly patient develop cardiac and cerebral symptoms more prominently because of associated cardiovascular diseases. So 
younger patient they tolerate anemia good because of good cardiovascular compensation as compared to the elderly patient who because of associated cardiovascular disease develop early sign and symptoms of anemia fourth factor is a hemoglobin dissociation curve in cases of anemia affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen is reduced or depressed so because 2 3 bpg in the red cell increase in case of anemia so as a result oxy hemoglobin is dissociated more rapidly to release free oxygen for cellular use causing a shift of oxy hemoglobin dissociation curve to the right so these are the four factors which are responsible for development of sign and symptoms of anemia what are the common symptoms in cases of anemia mainly the presenting features or symptoms are tiredness easy fatigability generalized muscular weakness lethargy headache but in older patients there may be symptoms of cardiac failure that is pain in the chest that is angina pectoris or intermittent claudication confusion and visual disturbances what are the signs of anemia the commonest sign is pallor this is the most common and characteristic sign seen in the mucous membrane that you can see the tongue or conjunctiva or skin so skin pallor is the most common and important characteristic sign of presence of anemia second is cardiovascular symptom because of anemia there is a hyperdynamic circulation so this is presented as a tachycardia increase in the heart rate collapsing pulse there may be a cardiomegaly or there may be a mid systolic flow murmur or there may be a dyspnea on exertion and especially in cases of elderly patient you may find congestive heart failure third sign is in the central nervous system especially in the older patient you can develop as an attack of faintness giddiness headache tinnitus drowsiness numbness and tingling sensations of the hand and feet although ocular manifestations are not very common but you may find retinal hemorrhage if there is associated a vascular disease or bleeding diastasis in the reproductive system there may be a menstrual disturbances because of anemia that is amenorrhea or menorrhagia or loss of libido so these are the some of the manifestations which you can find in reproductive system in anemic patients you may find mild proteinuria and impaired concentrating capacity of the kidney especially in cases of severe anemia or in gastrointestinal system you may find anorexia means loss of appetite flatulence nausea constipation and very rarely you may find weight loss 
So these are the common sign and symptom of anemia. You can summarize them. The most important is pallor in the conjunctiva or skin or mucous membrane. And second commonness uh, is uh, early particularity, tiredness, tachycardia, letharginess. These are the common symptoms and sign in cases of anemia. How we can investigate a patient of anemia? So generally, you obtain the first full medical history of the patient and then you see the specific and general sign of symptoms of the patient by examining the patient. And in this special emphasis is done on the color of the skin, conjunctiva, sclera, and nails. There may be you find atrophy of the papilla in the tongue. Sometimes in cases of anemia, you will find that on examination, there is evidence of bleeding or there may be enlargement of liver and spleen, that is hepatomegaly and splenomegaly or sometimes rarely you can find lymphadenopathy and bone tenderness also. So in order either to confirm or to rule out the presence of anemia and its type or its cause, the investigation profile is consisted of that you do complete blood count, CBC and reticulocyte count. This is the basic test. So first, foremost or important investigation in case of estimation of anemia is hemoglobin estimation. So if you are suspecting somebody that he or she could be anemic, then you do hemoglobin estimation. There are so many methods of doing hemoglobin estimation, but the most reliable and accurate is SYNMATH hemoglobin method, in which we use directed solutions and we take the help of spectrophotometer to know the amount of hemoglobin. If you find that hemoglobin value is below the normal limit of normal range for particular age and sex, then patient is told to be anomic. Patient is taken as an anemic. In cases, especially in pregnancy, because of hemodilution, the lower limit of normal pregnant women of hemoglobin is, is slightly low. So in a normal females, the lower limit of normal of hemoglobin is 11.5. But in case of pregnancy, this lower limit is a one gram lower, that is 10.5 gram per deciliter than in comparison to the non-pregnant state. So, second test which you should do is and for assessing or diagnosing anemia is peripheral blood film examination. So, hemoglobin estimation is invariably followed by examination of peripheral blood film for morphological changes. And for this purpose, the blood film is stained with Leishman stain. And then blood smear is evaluated 
in an area where there is either neither roller formation because of plump, plumping of the uh, rpc or not very thin so which can cause the red cell distortion so in such an area we can usually see the junction of the body and tail of the film so you can see the morphological changes in the rbc the common morphological changes which you can find in case of anemia maybe there is a spherocyte maybe a cystocyte irregularly contracted or may be a target cell like or it can appear like a sickle cell like acanthocytes so these are the common morphological changes which we can find in case of anemia as i told you earlier that although hemoglobin is the most common and main investigation to either diagnose or to rule out the presence of anemia but there are some alternative uh, test which can also be taken into account to diagnose and confirm so one of this alternative test is peripheral smear examination you can see whether there is a microcytic uh, or macrocytic rbc or there may be a hypochromic rbc or maybe any abnormal shape in the rbc uh, especially in case of sickle cell anemia you will find the sickle cell of the rbc or you can find in case of uh, hemolysis sometimes target cells so red cell indices they can serve an alternative method to diagnose and detect the severity of the anemia and this red cell indices also help in morphological classification of anemia for example in iron deficiency and thalassemia you will find that mean corpuscular volume mch is reduced F mcb is reduced and mcsc is also reduced so all these three indices mean corpuscular volume mean hemoglobin concentration and mean con uh, uh, corpuscular hemoglobin all are reduced in cases of at uh, this uh, microcytic hypochromic anemia especially in early stage of iron deficiency anemia you will find that rdw which is increased but in other type of microcytic hypochromic anemia thalassemia rdw is initially normal so you will find mcb or mean corpuscular volume reduced in both the cases in iron deficiency and thalassemia so when you want to differentiate between iron deficiency and thalassemia you do rdw examination so rdw is increased in the cases of early cases of iron deficiency anemia while it is normal in cases of thalassemia trait so this is how you can differentiate between two common causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia by doing rdw examination in another case of anemia that is a, a, a acute loss or in case of hemolytic anemia you will find that these red cell indices mcb mch and mcsc they are all within normal limits so by in case of megaloblastic anemia mcv mean corpuscular volume is raised usually this is more than 100 so these red cell indices they can be alternative method to diagnose anemia or to do morphological classification of anemia 
other tests which can be done or which should be done in cases of anemia diagnosis is leukocyte and platelet count. This leukocyte and platelet count, they help to distinguish between this is a pure anemia or from pancytopenia. In cases of pancytopenia, you will find that not only RBC, but WBC and platelet, they are also reduced. So while in cases of pure anemia, the leukocyte and platelet count, they are usually normal. In cases of anemia, if it is because of hemolysis or hemorrhage, then this neutrophil count and platelet count, they are often elevated. In cases of infections and leukemia, if anemia is because of either infection or leukemia, you will find that leukocyte count, they are high and you will also find immature leukocyte in the blood. So this leukocyte count and platelet count is used to rule out whether this is a pure anemia case or it is because of some other pathology. Reticulocyte count is also done in cases of anemia. Normal reticulocyte count is 0.5 to 2.5 percent. And by doing a reticulocyte count, you can assess whether marrow is working normally or not. Marrow erythropoietic activity is normal or not. In cases of acute hemorrhage and in the hemolysis that reticular count, side count is high while if it is because of depression of, of bone marrow due to any cause then reticular side count is low and this reticular side count is also an important indicator to assess the effect of treatment to uh, know the effect of treatment in the marrow activity or in the blood by reticulocyte count. In early stages of the treatment, you will find the reticulocyte count is increased. This means that patient is responding to the treatment. You can also do erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Although it is a non-specific test and this does not uh, help in direct diagnosis of anemia, but by this you can rule out that what are the underlying disease that can cause uh, uh, anemia. Then last test which you can do is bone marrow examination. Bone marrow examination is only done when by routine investigation, the diagnosis of anemia or cause of anemia is not known, it is not obvious, then in case you can do bone marrow examination. So, the most important test to do is uh, do uh, detect and rule out the uh, anemia is hemoglobin estimation. And then there uh, is CBC and wafer uh, smear examination. And then there are some other means by which, which uh, other tests which you can help you in the uh, knowing the anemia or doing the typing of anemia or in, in classifying the anemia. So when you know that the patient is anemic, then you want to know it is what type of anemia. So there are many ways to classify anemia, but the commonly accepted, there are the two important ways is one is pathophysiological classification of anemia 
or this is also known as the etiological classification of anemia, and second is morphological classification of anemia. The pathological classification of anemia, anemia can be classified into three groups. Number one is anemia due to blood loss, which is again divided into two types, whether it is a acute anemia, post hemorrhagic anemia because of bleeding of acute in nature, or this anemia is of because of chronic blood loss. The most important cause is piles. Second uh, group is anemia because of impaired red cell formation. So whether red cell formation is normal or not, then this is the second type of anemia. Or third could be anemia because of increased red cell destruction. This is a hemolytic type of anemia. This hemolytic type of anemia, because of which is because of increased red cell breakdown, is either there is a intracorpuscular defect, which could be a hereditary or acquired, or there could be an extracorpuscular defect, which is a acquired type of hemolytic anemia. So, pathologically uh, or etiologically, we can classify anemia into because of the blood loss, because of increased uh, impaired red cell formation, or because of red cell destruction. The second important group of classifying anemia is morphological classification. And this morphological classification is based on the red cell size, whether they are small or uh, the normal, or they are large, or the hemoglobin content and red cell indices. So these are the three parameters which are used to do morphological classification of anemia. So morphologically, anemia can be classified into three types, microcytic, normocytic, and macrocytic. Microcytic anemia is either microcytic hypochromic anemia, in which all the indices, MCV, MCH, MCC, MCSC, all are reduced. Especially in iron deficiency anemia or certain non iron deficiency type of anemia, sideroblastic or anemia of the chronic disorder. Second group of morphological classification is anemia in normocytic normochromic, in which MCV, MCH, and MCSC all are normal. So, this normocytic normochromic anemia is usually in the cases of acute blood loss or hemolytic anemias or in bone marrow fail failures or anemia of chronic disorders. So in all these cases, you will find that all indices, MCB, MCH, MCSC, all are normal. Third group is a macrocytic of type of anemia in which MCV is raised, mean corpuscular volume is raised. This is usually more than 100 femtoliters. And the most common cause of macrocytic anemia is megaloblastic anemia, which is because of due to deficiency of either vitamin B12 or folic acid alone or in combination. So, uh, anemia can be classified as a pathophysiological basis or morphological basis. Morphologically, three groups microcytic, hypochromic, normocytic, normochromic, macrocytic. Pathologically or etiological classification, you will find three main groups whether anemia because of increased blood loss or in impaired red cell production or increased red cell destruction. Now we will discuss the 
hypochromic anemias. Hypochromic anemias, they are the commonest cause of hypochromic anemia is iron deficiency anemia. And this is the commonest type of anemia on the world over. It is estimated that about 20% of women in child-bearing age suffer from this type of anemia. Although in case of adult male, the incidence of hypochromic or iron deficiency anemia is only 2%. This iron deficiency anemia is the most important cause of microcytic hypochromic anemia, but there are other reasons also in which you will find microcytic hypochromic pictures and this is because of defective hemoglobin synthesis. So hypochromic anemia now they can be classified basically to two groups. Hypochromic anemia due to iron deficiency anemia or hypochromic anemia other than iron deficiency. So the second group that is hypochromic anemia other than iron deficiency include three groups mainly that is sideroblastic anemia, thalassemia anemia because of defective hemoglobin synthesis and anemia of chronic disorders. So in these three incidences, you will find microcytic hypochromic picture, but the most common type of hypochromic anemia is iron deficiency anemia. So iron deficiency anemia is, it is a commonest nutritional deficiency disorder present throughout the world. And this prevalence of iron deficiency anemia is more in developing countries in comparison to the developed countries. So you should know what, uh, that, what is the normal metabolism of the iron before uh, uh, labeling somebody as a iron deficiency anemia, what is the cause? Normally, the amount of iron which is needed by the body is obtained from the diet. And this iron which is obtained from the diet, this should replace the losses of the iron which are commonly from the skin, bowel and gastroenterary tract. These losses are usually about one milligram in daily in an adult male, but in or in non-maturating women, but in cases of maturating women, this loss is an additional. There is an additional iron loss of 0.5 to 1 milligram daily in comparison to the adult male or non-maturating female. So. Iron, require, iron is an important uh, part which is required for the hemoglobin synthesis. And there are two most important primary sources from, with, from where this iron is obtained. Number one is either ingestion of the food and the food which commonly contain iron are leafy vegetables, beef, meat, liver etc or second source of obtaining iron is from the recycling of the sensate red cells. The average western diet contains about 10 to 15 milligram of iron out of which only 5 to 10 percent is normally absorbed in special cases of pregnancy and in iron deficiency, this absorption of iron, which is normally 5 to 10 percent, this is increased up to 20 to 30 percent. So, in a normal dietary iron, there is only 5 to 10 percent iron absorbed, but whenever there is a, any extra demand of iron, either maybe because of 
uh, pregnancy or any other cause, then this iron absorption is raised up to 20 to 30 percent. And this iron is mainly absorbed in the duodenum and proximum jejunum. And the absorption of iron is regulated by mucosal block mechanism. It means when iron stores are low, especially in pregnancy, menstruation, period of growth, and various diseases, when there is an increased demand of body, then absorption is increased. But when iron stores are increased, for example, the, there, is, there is excessive deposition of iron, especially in case of hemocytosis, then only very little amount of iron is absorbed or transported. Iron from the diet containing heme is better absorbed than the non-heme iron. So this is the cycle that normally uh, the iron requirement in male is one milligram per day, while in case of female it is, if menstruating, it is 1.5 milligram per day, and there is ovulating uterine loss like this only. So this is how iron is absorbed in the ferrous form, mainly in the upper small intestine, and then this absorbed iron is converted into the ferric form, which is utilized by the RBC in, uh, in the presence of globulin to uh, uh, produce hemoglobin. And this iron is stored in, in the tissues also and in plasma and in enzymes or in the RBC. So this is the how iron is. And the spheric iron is transported to the liver, where in the presence of epoferritin, this is combined in the liver and stored there. I told you the mainly it is the heme form of the iron, which is more uh, important, but Absorption of another form of iron that is non heme form of iron is absorption is increased by some factors that is ascorbic acid or vitamin C, citric acid, sugars, gastric secretion, and a hypochloric acid, which is normally present in the gas stomach secretions. And same time, iron absorption is decreased or reduced by some factor, especially the medicinal use of antacid, milk, pancreatic secretion, phytates present in the diet, phosphates, or EDTA, and tannates, which is commonly present in the tea. Non heap of the iron is released as a ferrous form of ferric form, but it is only absorbed exclusively in the ferrous form only, and reduction of ferric to ferrous form this takes place in the intestinal brush by the ferric reductase. Iron is transported in the form of plasma bound to beta globulin and the transferrin, and then it is synthesized in the liver and transferrin bound iron is made available to the marrow for the development of RBC in the presence of the transparent receptors. The body is enabled to regulate the its iron content only by excretion alone. The amount of iron which is lost per day is about 0.5 to 1 milligram and which is lost from the uh, uh, in case of an epithelial cell or from the gastrointestinal mucosa or in the urine or the sweat and if from the hair or nails, some small amount is excreted in the feces only and which is mainly a unabsorbed form of the iron. But this 
excretion or loss of iron is just double in cases of menstruating woman. This is around 1 to 2 milligram. Normally, the iron excreted or lost on body would be 0.5 to 1 milligram. But in case of menstruating woman, this is just double, that is 1 to 2 milligram of the iron. So, this is, these are the pathways of absorption of the iron, transport of the iron. How iron is distributed in the body? In an adult, mainly in the hemoglobin, about 65% of the iron is present in the red cells, while only small amount, that is 3.5% of the iron is present in the muscles as a myoglobin. Some only small amount, that is 0.5% of iron is present in the form of heme and non-heme enzymes. 0.5% of the iron is transparent bond iron, which is circulated in the plasma. And ferritin and hemosiderin are the storage forms of the iron. It is a, a big chunk that is around 30% of the iron is stored in the body in the form of ferritin and hemosiderin. They are stored in the mononuclear phagocytic cells of the spleen liver, bone marrow, and in the parenchymal cells of the liver. How iron deficiency anemia develop? Iron deficiency anemia develop when either the supply of iron is inadequate for the hemoglobin synthesis or there is excessive loss. Initially what happened that if there is a negative iron balance, which is then it can be initially it can be covered by mobilization of the iron from the tissues or storage. But when only this store of iron they are exhausted, then the supply it means that there is a small, uh, not sufficient amount of iron is available. To the marrow for the formation of hemoglobin. So in that case only, when the stores are exhausted, there is a development of iron deficiency anemia. So iron deficiency anemia, which usually develop, and there may be three factors: either there is an increased blood loss, or there is an increased requirement, or there is an increased dietary intakes inadequate so when a diet is deficient in the iron or the requirements are increased in some special circumstances uh, the growing child or the menstruating woman or pregnant woman or there may be any increased blood loss these are the three situations when the iron deficiency is uh, developed although sometimes there is a decreased intestinal absorption is also responsible for the development of anemia. In general, that in the developed country, the mechanism of iron deficiency anemia is usually because of chronic occult drug loss. That is, in case of uh, bleeding piles or uh, uh, bleeding from the gastric ulcers or anywhere uh, uh, at the GIT. So poor intake of iron or defective absorptions, they are mainly responsible of development of iron deficiency anemia in developing country. So in developed country, the development of iron deficiency anemia is because of the blood loss. But in case of developing country, it is the poor intake of iron or poor absorption of iron for responsible of development of iron deficiency anemia. So this is how we summarize what is the etiology of the iron deficiency anemia. 
you know, either increase weight loss or increase requirement of inadequate dietary intake or dietary absorption. So these are the four more important causes of development of iron deficiency in India. What are the laboratory tests which we can do either to diagnose or to confirm the iron deficiency anemia? There are three steps. First step is that in the iron deficiency anemia, what happens? There is a depletion of iron. So in this state, the uh, uh, Iron reserves are lost, but iron supply for erythropoiesis is there. There is no compulsion. But in the second stage, that, that there is a deficiency of iron as well. So iron supply uh, supplied is for the erythroid process is reduced, and but there is no development of anemia. In the final stage, what happens? That there is a development of frank iron deficiency anemia and red cell becomes microcytic and hypochromic. So what are the tests which we can do to assess the various iron deficiency anemia is? Number one is blood picture and red cell analysis. So this blood picture or red cell analysis, they vary with the degree of anemia. Usually, in case of mild to moderate, occasionally it may be marked when hemoglobin is less than 6 grams or due to persistent and severe blood loss. Then, salient hematologic findings in this case are that hemoglobin is a main feature which found a fall in the hemoglobin concentration up to a variable degree. Red cell indices. In iron deficiency in India, they are hypochromic and microscopic. So means MCB and MCH and MCC all are reduced. You may find there will be an ISO and polyclocytosis. Usually in the iron deficiency in India, first there is a development of hypochromic hypochromasia before developing microcytosis. So microcytosis is developed only in the later stages of. So initial is a hypochromasia because of poor filling of the red cell with the hemoglobin. So there is a increased central pallor. Uh, in severe cases of anemia, you will find only a thin ring of pink staining at the periphery. Sometimes you may find target cell elliptical forms or polychromatic cells, they are seen. Normoblasts, they are usually not seen, but in severe cases or the later stages of the disease, you may find a normoblast. RBC count is below normal, but this is not proportionate to the fall of hemoglobin value. When iron deficiency anemia is associated with severe folate or vitamin B12 deficiency, then you will find a diabolic blood picture because of deficiency of both. So you will find a dual proportion of red cell. Some are macrocytic and some are microcytic. Otherwise, in cases of pure iron deficiency anemia or microstatic hypochromic anemia, you will find MCV and MCH are reduced for microstatic RBCs, they are seen. Reticulocyte count is normal or reduced in cases of iron deficiency anemia, but if it is because of hemorrhage, then it is only slightly raised. So, absolute values or red cell indices, they have a diminished MCB normally below 50 femtoliter, diminished MCH below 50 microgram, and diminished MCSC below 20 gram per DL in cases of 
severe iron deficiency anemia leukocyte counts are usually normal in cases of iron deficiency anemia platelet count are also normal but only when iron deficiency anemia is because of the bleeding then they are slightly raised when it is not possible to diagnose the cause of iron deficiency anemia then only in very small percentage of cases you need a bone marrow examination otherwise in a normal case of iron deficiency anemia you do not need a bone marrow examination so bone marrow examination is not essential or not fd in cases of the diagnosing iron deficiency anemia but in only in complicated cases to distinguish or to differentiate it, differentiate it from other case causes of hypochromic anemia you can do bone marrow examination so what are the finding in such cases that marrow cellularity the marrow cellularity is increased due to erythroid hyperplasia or myeloid erythroid ratio is decreased erythropoiesis there is a normoblastic type of erythropoiesis mainly predominant with a small polychromatic normoblast or some micro normoblast may be seen these normoblasts have a thin rim of cytoplasm around the nucleus and ragged and irregular border so what happens in case of iron deficiency anemia that there is a cytoplasmic maturation which is lag behind so that in late normoblasts you will have pycnotic nucleus but persistent polychromatic cytoplasm so this is a different from in comparison to megaloblastic anemia in which this nuclear maturation is lag behind so in case of iron deficiency anemia this is a cytoplasmic maturation which is lag behind what are the other cells which you can find is myeloid lymphoid or myocritic cells you can see in a bone marrow in a normal in number and morphology but the most important thing is that you will find the marrow iron stores iron staining is done by persian blue reactions on bone marrow spread smear it shows deficient reticular endothelial iron stores and absence of normal cytochrome iron granules in developing normoblasts so this is the one of the important finding in cases of the severe iron deficiency anemia or in the later late stages of iron deficiency anemia that if you do iron staining on the bone marrow this shows that iron stores they are reduced and the cytochromoblastic iron granules which are normally seen in the bone marrow they are not there what biochemical finding you will find in addition the blood and bone marrow examination some biochemical tests they are also of important that serum iron level is normal is 40 to 140 mg per deciliter this is low in cases of iron deficiency anemia and the serum iron falls below 15 microgram per deciliter then marrow iron stores are absent so in the earlier stage of the test you will find the marrow iron stores are normal but only when there is a severe deficiency and serum iron is less than 15 mg then only iron stores are absent second important test biochemical test is total iron binding capacity this total iron binding capacity is normal is 250 to 450 microgram per deciliter this is increased and this gives less than 10% saturation normally saturation is 
But in case of severe iron deficiency anemia, you will find that iron binding capacity is increased. In anemia of chronic disorders, where you will find serum iron and total iron binding capacity, they are both are reduced. So this is how you can differentiate between a microcytic hypochromic anemia due to iron deficiency alone or because of chronic disorders where you will find the serum iron and total iron binding capacity they are not increased but they are reduced serum ferritin level is also very low normal ferritin level is 32 to 50 nanogram per ml so if serum ferritin level is low it indicates that there is a poor tissue iron store serum ferritin level is raised whenever there is a iron overload or in cases of chronic disorder, the serum ferritin level is also normal. So in chronic uh, uh, disorders, serum ferritin level and serum iron and total iron binding capacity, they are normal. They are not raised and serum ferritin is also not low. Red cell protoporphyrin is very low in cases of when there is an insufficient iron supply to the iron. So this back. Serum transferrin receptor protein, which is normally present in the developing erythroid cell and reflect total red cell mass, is raised in case of iron deficiency anemia because of its release in the circulation. Normal level is 4 to 9 micrograms per liter which can be determined by immuno assays. So this is how a laboratory finding in a normal patient and iron deficiency anemia, you will find that in red cell morphology, you will find microcytic hypogromic red cells. In the mar marrow examination, you will find the micronormoblast and iron stores, they are deficient. And this is a picture blood picture that you will find the micronormalastic, microcytic, and hypochromasia.